At this point, we're going to add some more CSS3 features, and I happen to have a number of websites open here. Uh, at the moment, as you can see, we're looking at the one that we just completed in the last video. So this is our progress file with the rounded corners in place. But what I'm going to introduce to you right now is a new CSS3 selector that deals with it's not the selector, it's actually the property that deals with a box shadow. So the box shadow property, and as you'll notice here in our progress file, we have in our content area this little line that's on the side of this containing box. Right now, I mean, that's fine, I have no problem with it, but given that we're looking at CSS3 features, if I go to the older version, the one that actually is finished, you'll notice that there is a slight difference. Here we actually happen to have a little drop shadow going all the way across and you may or may not notice it's rather subtle even on the links you'll notice that on the hover effect there's a bit of a drop shadow on the top and the bottom of those links. So let's see how we can implement the box shadow in our design. So if you're still working with the progress, which is what I'm looking at right here, I'm going to ask you to go to the style. And if you remember from our source code, here's the source code. Next to the navigation, we have the article tag. And the article tag is the one that we want to put our drop shadow on. So if we go to our CSS style sheet and we go to article, let me go to the progress one, here it is. Here is our article. And at the moment, you'll notice that it is floating on the right hand side. It's got a border color and a border style of solid with a one pixel amount. However, you'll notice that we will now put in our box shadow. So to do so, we just put in the words box dash shadow. But as you may remember, with many of the different things that we've been working with, with regards to CSS3, we often have to add some extra information for different browsers. And we'll get to that in just a second. But first of all, let's look at the declarations that we put into the box shadow. Right now, I'm just putting zero, you don't have to write pixels, but I'll put in pixels in case you want to add some more amounts later on. And zero pixels, and five pixels, and a color of 888, which is kind of a grayish color. Well, let's run through exactly what this means. Here, this first amount, and again, anytime you're using zero, you don't have to put PX for pixels, but I'm putting it in here in case you want to add some more a little bit later on. But basically what this is saying is horizontal shadow, vertical shadow. So in other words, how much of the shadow is going to happen horizontally and vertically? Where is it going to be placed, horizontally or vertically on that particular box? In this case, the article. So horizontal and vertical. And five pixels here is for the blur amount. How much of that blur is happening? In other words, if we set this to zero, we would just end up with you know a gray line, depending on how thick it would be. But right now, this is a blur amount. So I'm really, as you can see here, only just blurring five pixels. And that's going everywhere, not just horizontal and vertically. And here is just what color you want that actual shadow to be. So that's pretty easy, simple enough if you can see it and compare it to anything else that we've been doing up to this point. However, as I've mentioned, with CSS3, there's often the need to address other browsers. And in this case, what we want to be addressing are the WebKit browsers. And the WebKit browsers would you know, compose Google Chrome or working with Safari. And here I'm just going to say dash webkit dash box dash shadow. That's really all we got to do to make it work in that amount. I'm going to give it exactly the same amount as we had before. And as you can see, I'm just going to put in a little comment here to let you and everybody else know that this is for Safari. Don't forget to close that comment. 
So here is our Safari declaration. So let's save it and let's jump on over to our browser and I'm going to go to the correct one. This is my progress file and you'll notice normally we don't see anything happening here but as soon as I refresh this amount, ah, look at that. We have a means of separating this area from this area just by adding a little bit of a drop shadow. Now, if we had a lighter background than the one that I have here, I might be inclined to add some drop shadow effect on the sides of this whole containing document. But in this case, all I really want to do is to address the article right here in this section. So that's great, but as I mentioned in the earlier method, we also noticed that there were drop shadows on the navigational elements that we have right here on the side. So I'm going to direct you to your CSS style sheet yet again, and let's take a look. If you remember, the drop shadow is only invoked when the links are rolled over. So it is in fact the hover state of the link that I'm particularly interested in. So why don't we come in here and there's really not much that we need to do other than copy paste the information that we had just a second ago. So I copy that box shadow amount, put it in here, and when we save this, it's a very subtle effect because we already have the greens, but notice if I refresh this now, we still have our drop shadow here, and check it out. Now there's this very soft and subtle, just a little bit of a shadow effect right on the edges there. So that can show you some pretty interesting things. One last thing I want to mention about the box shadow. There's one extra declaration that I'm not using at the moment and since I'm in Safari I'll illustrate that by just putting it into the Safari but I'm going to remove it soon enough so you can choose to do this if you want or not. But I'm just putting it in to show it to you even though I will be removing it because I'm not really all that crazy about how it looks in our design although it can look really nice in other designs. So check this out. We can also indicate that the drop shadow should be inset and what that means is rather than have the shadow be on the outside of our article we're gonna have it on the inside of the article. So I'm gonna save this and let's jump on over to Safari just to preview. Now as we can see this is my article area here and the drop shadow is on the outside of that. But if I preview this with the inset effect, notice it's kind of subtle again, but the article area looks like it's lower than the navigational area simply because this is now inset. Isn't that fun? So that shows you some of the differences between those two. And as you can see, kind of gives us the illusion that this navigation area seems to be higher than this area down here. That would be made even more noticeable if you had two different colors on either side of these or even just a very subtle change in the white. I mean, this is not actually pure white at the moment, but you can make it even more off-white if you wanted to create more of that sort of separation. Now I'm going to stick with the normal one that we were working with, so I'm going to just remove that and save it. And as you can see, if I come back in here and preview that, you can see now it's on the outside. And this area actually seems as if it is at a higher level than this area down here. This one now seems as if it's pushed in the background. So that's a great new feature with CSS3 called Box Shadow. When we come back, I'm going to show you some more CSS3 as well.